This is Jupiter Hell. I've been waiting for this one to come out of Early Access to finally take a look at it, and here it is. It just came out very recently, and this is effectively a sort of spiritual successor to the Doom roguelike, and it's not shy of letting you know that with pretty much all of its themes and creatures and weapons and everything being very clearly Doom-like. Now, roguelikes, the proper, actual, old-school roguelikes in me go back a very long time. They were some of the earliest games that I played because, well, they were easy to run on anything, they were free, and they were very easily available on BBSs if you know where to look. So obviously, in the early 2000s, I came across the Doom roguelike and enjoyed it a lot. And I believe that game stopped being regularly updated back in like 2013-ish. So it's really cool to see that torch being passed to a more modern game. Now, as far as modern roguelikes go, this one's actually pretty accessible. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the classics are known for having quite complex control schemes and things. But in this case, it's actually quite simple. The gameplay itself is not simplified, but the controls are pretty easy. You have a simple up, down, left, and right. There is no diagonal movement in this game, so if you want to move diagonal, you have to actually take two turns to do so. Uh, that means you don't have to worry about using the numpad for movement if you're not used to that concept. You also, of course, have a fire button, a manual aim button, uh, menu stuff like an inventory and things like that. It's all very simple as far as roguelikes go. You don't have to m uh, memorize the entire keyboard's worth of controls or anything like that, but the game itself still keeps that classic feeling Doom roguelike-ish complexity. One thing that immediately makes it stand out from other classic roguelikes is the fact that, of course, there are guns everywhere. You know, a lot of roguelikes are fantasy games, and thus they are based around sword and shield combat and things of that nature, with some spells here and there being sort of uh, exotic things you can do sometimes, but your mainstay is melee combat. But, of course, in this case, ranged combat is the main thing. Melee combat is something that you generally only do if you absolutely have to, or if you're building a very specific sort of character build around it. For the most part, you're going to be using guns. And enemies, of course, also will be using ranged weapons for the most part as well. So this is a very ranged-focused roguelike, a bit odd for the genre, and that means movement is even more important than it is in your traditional standard roguelike where, you know, it's basically chess anyway, so movement is, is very important. But in this case, because you have things like line of sight and cover mechanics, movement is even more important, and uh, you have to make sure to, you know, get yourself in a good cover, sometimes wait a couple of turns to aim better, and also make sure your enemies are also not in very good cover so that you can actually hit them. And of course, another thing that comes along with a game much more focused on ranged combat is an ammunition economy, so you have to worry about bullets as well. And you want to make sure you're not constantly wasting shots on really low chance to hit targets that are behind cover. This also means there's quite a bit of environmental interactivity that you have to take into account. For instance, a lot of cover can actually be destroyed or damaged in some way, thus eliminating it as cover. So if your enemy is hiding behind a bunch of boxes or whatever, you could just take a couple of shotgun shells into them to disintegrate them, and now suddenly your enemy's not in cover anymore, but beware this can of course be done to you. And this also means that there are, in classic Doom style, a lot of other more explosive environmental objects like exploding barrels and acid barrels and stuff, and you can save a lot of ammo by actually using those against your enemies, you know, trying to work them into a choke point around an explosive barrel and then blowing it up with one shot and taking out like four enemies with that one shot. That kind of thing is very important in this game because your ammunition economy is something you have to constantly keep your eye on, and the fact that you have a, a fairly small number of overall inventory slots, depending on your levels and stuff it means you have to be careful about what you take since ammo of each type takes up slots as well as uh, healing items health kits and stim packs and stuff like that as well as various types of grenades and some mod kits because you can modify weapons there's a lot to consider and that's where that depth comes in that you would expect from a classic roguelike you know it's all about what you're carrying versus what you're facing versus how you can get out of it alive you're actually going around the various moons of Jupiter in this case, hence the name, and it starts simple enough with just a, a class selection. There are three different classes. The main difference between the classes are some little passive bonuses as well as maybe some starting equipment that's a bit different, and uh, they each have a different resource that regenerates in a different way and a special active ability they can use this resource on. So for instance, the sort of base starting class is the Marine, which has Fury, and Fury regenerates with each kill little by little, and you can spend 30 Fury to use Adrenaline, which will heal you a little bit as well as make you immune to pain for a short time. Pain is a debuff that happens as you take damage and will uh, make your aim worse and worse as it builds up, so you'll have a harder time hitting things the more pain you're in. He also gets a bit of a healing bonus depending on how much pain that he had built up at the time of using the adrenaline, so it's something that you want to use like in the depths of combat rather than at the very beginning oftentimes to get the best benefit from it. And each of the three classes has an ability like that, giving the characters a bit of a different feel. Uh, there is also a level system, as is 
traditional for a classic roguelike, as you destroy monsters and things, you will get XP. You can also get XP from some other things I noticed. Sometimes there will be special events that just randomly happen on each floor, and if you can clear out the floor during those special events, because it will be more dangerous, you will get a big lump of experience. It's usually very well worth it if you feel confident enough that you can survive doing so. And with each level comes one perk point. There are various passive traits that you can choose from, as well as these master traits that require a certain selection of the other lesser traits that have to be purchased first and a certain minimum level before you can actually get them, and you can only have one master trait per character run, but they're very powerful. They tend to be a very large effects. I'm a big fan of the Onslaught perk, which allows you to actually continue to fire automatic weapons while moving with an aiming penalty, which is actually a pretty big deal because that basically means you're taking two turns per one turn since you can move and fire at the same time. Okay. So yeah, the, uh, the master traits are very powerful. Generally speaking, they're things that you want to choose at the beginning of your run and then work towards to get as soon as possible because they're very, very potent and you'll need all the help you can get. But there are various different traits and uh, each class has a bit of a different selection of them. Some of them are sort of generic to everyone and some of them are unique to that class, but basically there are several different viable builds that you could possibly choose for each of the three classes, so that means there's actually a pretty good amount of character building variety in the game, and uh, you'll want to be choosing and building up to these big, huge master trait trees as early as you can. But, of course, the meat of a game like this is in the weapons and the things that you're using the weapons on. Uh, the weapons start off pretty simple with things like 9mm pistols and 12 gauge shotguns, your pretty basic stuff that's actually quite satisfying to use because the game has a pretty nice sound design to it and uh, a pretty good amount of feedback on the weapons. If you actually like spray a shotgun into a room, things tend to sort of come apart, uh, boxes will explode and it'll spark off walls and stuff, just little visual cues like that to help the uh, weapons feel a bit more satisfying, add a bit of weight to them, which is nice, especially when combat is, you know, you're removed from the combat in a roguelike, you have a very high up perspective on the whole thing, so helping the weapons feel a bit more weighty is actually kind of a difficult thing to do when you're not like first or third person. So it's appreciated that the weapons have that nice feel to them, actually they have good sound assets, they have nice effects to them, and they feel pretty, pretty punchy overall, which I mean, you would hope for a Doom game, but in a roguelike, that's like I said, not the easiest thing to do necessarily, but the weapons will quickly evolve from there, giving you access to some other fancier stuff like revolvers of various kinds, SMGs and some rifles and assault rifles, up to the 7.62 assault rifle, which is sort of like the midpoint of the game-ish, and eventually you'll be getting stuff like energy weapons, like plasma weaponry and stuff, and actually the way that the energy weapons in this game are given to you kind of reminds me of like an abridged version of Fallout 1, where you don't get that really shiny energy stuff until like near the very end, but by the time you get it, it's like perfectly timed with the enemies becoming much more difficult, so you'll actually need that extra shiny firepower at that point anyway. So the game kind of hides some of its most shiny, fancy stuff to near the end, and it's given to you in like perfect timing with the enemies themselves getting a lot more difficult. You can also find various modified versions of weapons that can have different procedural extra passive bits onto them, like making them do more damage at a certain range, or making them do more damage on successive hits, and stuff like that. There are all kinds of various little buffs that weapons can potentially drop with. You can also find modding kits of various kinds, and you can apply mods to weapons. Different weapons have a different capacity for a different number of mods, and there's, you know, like accuracy and power mods and things like that that can add all sorts of extra bits, like an extra minimum range, or an extra crit chance, and, you know, all sorts of things to allow you to sort of customize your arsenal to be uh, relevant to whatever build you're going for and just to make your weapons more and more powerful, which you will need, because this game actually has quite a large enemy variety to it. The enemies are definitely a threat. Even the early sort of fodder zombie enemies can do a good amount of damage to you if you're not careful, because of course they have guns, so you have to actually be careful, you have to use cover well, you have to bait them into hallways and around uh, corners of walls and things that allow you to, just movements that allow you to stay in cover and make them uncover themselves basically so that you can get good shots off on them and not get whittled away slowly on the early levels. Later on you'll be encountering enemies with much more uh, dangerous weaponry like chain guns and rocket launchers and things, although the cool thing about that is since this is a roguelike they do drop their weapons if you're able to kill them, so it is actually worth going after those very dangerous enemies and getting rid of them, not just to help you live, but because they'll drop some ammo and the weapon itself. 
But of course, as you go deeper into the various moons of Jupiter, you'll start finding that there are more and more demonic and mechanical enemies. Starting with smaller things that are kind of like imps that can throw fireballs at you, which is always unpleasant because they set you on fire and do damage over time. And some like sentry turrets and, uh, you know, small guns on legs effectively to much more large giant robot style enemies, which are like entirely armored and very dangerous. And some really nasty demons and some like almost cyber demon-esque stuff that you would, you know, kind of expect from a Doom game, right? It's all about like that combination of like flesh and steel with the creepy demons that are also cybernetic. You get that stuff later on in the game, and there's also some other crazy elemental stuff like ice demons and nasty acid-spewing things and these big armored reaver things. And yeah, there's actually a lot of enemy variety in this game. That is one of my favorite aspects of a good roguelike is a really good amount of enemy variety because you can have as many weapons as you want, but the combat is only as varied as the things that you can actually use those weapons on. And if you're just facing the same things over and over again, it can get a little bit repetitive, but this game it does a really good job of introducing new enemies and new threats and new environmental hazards and levels and things as you go so that it never really gets stale. You know, every area has a pretty large selection of possible nasty things that you're going to run into. Speaking of areas, the game uses a very non-linear branching structure, very much like a uh, hack style games, you know, like NetHack and uh, its various, well, variants. And the way that it works is you have a sort of linear path that you're meant to go on, but there will also be various other elevators throughout the levels that go to optional side paths that allow you to sidestep some of those linear areas and get some extra loot and, of course, face some extra threats as well. So you might go to some of these side areas if you feel that you're strong enough to actually survive them for a couple of levels in order to get some more XP and some more loot. Uh, oftentimes these side areas can have fancy stuff like extra armor pieces and there's even some uh, like demonic relics and some other passive things that you can equip to yourself to make yourself stronger. And there's also the chance to find some uh, legendary equipment, actual named weapons and items and stuff that give you all sorts of extra benefits if you're able to survive getting to them. The areas themselves have a really nice sense of atmosphere because the game's overall lighting is really good. It uses lighting to its advantage, so there are creepy, dark, abandoned bases and like hellish lava-filled caverns and some other different types of areas throughout the game. You'll be going through a lot of like bases and things, but even the different bases on the different moons still have a completely different tile set, so it doesn't get too repetitive because they each look different. They have various different types of architecture and color schemes and things to keep things a little bit more fresh. And uh, like I said, the game's atmosphere does a really good job of sort of keeping you on edge with this, you know, forlorn marine base theme. The music of the game also does a pretty good job because it's uh, basically it's doom kind of cheesy metal stuff, which is what you would want really for a game like this. And it, it definitely does a good job of uh, getting you prepared for the hordes of demons that you're going to face. It's a pretty nice soundtrack. And overall, I think it's a really good experience. I think Jupiter Hell is a very, very worthy successor to the Doom roguelike. I think it knows exactly what uh, made that game so much fun for all those years. And it's updating it and building on it in a way that makes it its own game, but still very reminiscent of where its ideas have clearly come from. As a long, long time lover of classic roguelikes, this is a very easy game for me to recommend and see that it is absolutely worth your 20 bucks to go and check it out. I will link you in the description below this video to the Steam Store page for the game itself. Absolutely go check it out if you're at all a fan of roguelikes or a fan of Doom or just a fan of like tactical turn-based combat in some way. Maybe you've never actually delved into one before. This is a really good one to start with because it's got a simple control scheme that's still got a lot of depth to it. So yeah, this is a very, very well done roguelike and it's it's also just neat to have a more ranged combat focused roguelike since we don't get a lot of those. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.